The first thing you want to do is evaluate your working cast for imperfections that might have resulted while taking your impressions or pouring up your working cast. Outward or positive defects, as can be seen on this model, should be removed with a lab knife and can simply chip them or scrape them away. Inward or void defects are caused by trapped air or water as can be seen here and will cause imperfections in your final retainer. Can be corrected using base plate wax and a torch. or can be filled using a light cure resin to fill the void. The whip mix or vacuspat system is a good way of eliminating bubbles in your stone, but does not replace cautious and proper technique pouring up your models. Another step in working cast preparation is elimination of undesirable soft tissue undercuts or severe undercuts found along the base of teeth. In an ideal youthful arch for an individual who has had braces or has ideal dentition, you're not going to find much for undercuts and the path of insertion will be straightforward. For an individual who is older and has recession, you will most likely find recessed areas that would cause undercuts and binding of your retainer most likely causing the breakage of teeth when you fabricate the retainer or discomfort to the patient you would want to place base plate wax or some type of block out material in between severely recessed areas or along implants as noted here an example of moderate malocclusion where the posterior dentition is tipped lingually would require some block out of the undercuts noted here. The purpose for this is that the retainer will be inserted and the base or the flange will hit the cusp and would not allow for proper retainer insertion. Now we place our design on our working cast. It can either be designing full palatal coverage or a horseshoe coverage. With full palatal coverage, you design your parameters as seen here. Place a mark one millimeter distal to your first molar on both sides, then extend a straight line across the palate. Place another mark quarter inch below the gingival margin on both sides. Place a third mark a quarter inch above the midline suture and your straight line and then connect the three as seen here. To design the horseshoe shape you would do the same about a millimeter behind I got a little sloppy here about a millimeter behind the first molar extend it down approximately 8 to 10 millimeters and draw it in a horseshoe shape connecting once again to the a millimeter distal to the first molar. To design your labial bow grab your master cast I've already drawn on mine to show you the parameters but first you will mark a point one millimeter mesial to the center of your cuspid so one millimeter mesial and extend it straight up onto the gingiva so that you have plenty of room you could do it all the way through the cuspid if you want or just part way through. Extend another line mesial to your bicuspid straight up onto the gingiva paralleling the other mark that you made, the other line. Then you want to draw the adjustment loop. This is going to be about five to seven millimeters from 
the point where your straight line, which I will show you in a moment, connects onto the gingiva. So you will draw that later, but I am referencing that since you have seen it on the cast already. So you draw that on on the mesial of the bicuspid, uh, one millimeter mesial to the cuspid, and duplicate that on the opposing side. Then you get your straight ruler and you measure your central incisor. In this case it's 10 millimeters. So I mark a, a point at 5 millimeters, which is the middle third of this tooth, and I extend that line all the way across the incisors, all your anterior teeth. You can do this by using your ruler, your flexible ruler, and just extending it across and marking that. Make sure that they that your ruler is not canted in either direction or you'll have an uneven line so that it connects with your parallel lines on the cuspid and that forms your labial bow design. Once again, once you know the point where these two lines meet, you can measure five to seven millimeters and draw your adjustment loop, your approximate adjustment loop. Once again, this is a guide. You can now draw your wire extensions through the occlusal, through the occlusal embrasure onto the palate. So you'll extend the line mesial to the bicuspid over and into the palate. And you would just draw a straight line. And these will be your anchor wires that will be embedded in acrylic. So duplicate that on the other side. And these are your anchor wires, once again, that are embedded in the acrylic. There are other wires which we will draw. It will be your atoms or ball clasp, depending on preference but they would either be, if it's an Adams clasp, there would be two wires that extend into the pallet in this area along the first molar. If it's an, a ball clasp, it will start here on the mesial of the first molar and extend through the embrasure into the pallet, just as seen with the labial bow wire. So once again, if it's a ball clasp, mesial to the first molar, over the embrasure, the occlusal embrasure, and into the palate. These wire extensions into the acrylic will be secured by anchor bends. There are different ways of doing anchor bends. You could do a zigzag form, you can do an L-shaped form, or you could do a loop form. There are many other forms, such as a cross-back form, that can be used to anchor your wire. Any one of them are effective. It's based on preference. Many labs do that to identify themselves. One other consideration that can be taken is the opposing dentition, especially on maxillary retainers. Use the patient's opposing dentition, articulate it in a position, and use this as a guide to mark the palatal extension of the acrylic onto the central incisors. By doing this you will mark a line using the lower central incisors as a guide. You do not want the patient to bite onto the acrylic and you can prevent this by drawing a line using the opposing arch as your guide. Remove it and that shows you the maximum height of the acrylic on the maxillary retainer. Now to judge the posterior height, the general rule is approximately 1.5 millimeters up the tooth from the gingival margin. So approximately 1.5. You can mark this if you need or you can judge this as you cut down the retainer in the final steps.